Hey, hey, it is Zenial Gamer, and we're back with another Auto Win Teams video. Today, we're going to be talking about Kali, Chloe, and Covenant. Now, the basic premise of this team is that your Kali is going to be super fast. She's going to go first and put invincibility up on your team. Uh, then she's going to, then you're going to allow the entire enemy team to go while your Co Covenant and Kali are invincible. And by doing that, you're able to just put as much damage onto the Covenant and Kali as you can, allowing them to do a ton of damage. So you can see my Covenant build on screen right here. He's going to be hitting for right around 60,000 damage with max towers um, and attribute advantage. And then here's my Kali. She's going to be hitting for about 50,000 damage, again, with max towers in Guild War. So a little bit lower if I were doing this in Arena or RTA, for example. Now, knowing how much damage these monsters do is really important because it's going to help you decide which defenses you can bring them in against. Now, my Chloe is a monster. I actually didn't re-ruin her for this video, so at 273, she is kind of slow for this comp. And I know that a lot of you are, as soon as I say that, a lot of you are like, she's slow, but... Here's the thing, um, we're not using a speed lead on this team, so at 273, you're going to have to outspeed the enemy team. Will 273 work? Absolutely. Will 240 work? Probably. Uh, 250, you should be safe if you bring it in intelligently and at the right times, but the faster she is, the more teams you can bring her in against. Basically, I wouldn't be able to bring her in against any team that has a speed lead right now. So. Figure if the enemy monster is 240, but it has a 30 speed lead, then it's going to be up about the same speed as myself. Makes a big difference. You know, if it's a 30% speed lead like a Susano or something like that, makes a big difference. We really need our Chloe to outspeed. Now we're going to break down how you build these monsters in the optimizer, but first I want to go in and just show you a couple of comps so that you can get an idea of how it will work. So I am recording this video on a Sunday night and I want to actually go through and kind of show you guys some of the different siege defenses you might face and where or when it might uh, be good to bring in this comp. Now the irony is it would actually not work against any of my own siege defenses. So I'm going to run through these real quick and then we're going to go find some guildies and see if we can find a defense where it would work against. But let's just briefly talk about why it would not work against my siege defenses because knowing when not to bring in an auto win team is actually the most important way to use it. If you bring in that team when it's countered and it loses, then you've just wasted it. And not only have you wasted an attack, but you've wasted one of your best teams to boot. So if we look at this first team right here, uh, now I happen to know my Triton is on Despair. He's not super fast, so the Kali would outspeed, but that doesn't help me because Triton is going to go ahead and strip, and then I'm going to get killed by the, the Rico or the Annabelle. This team right here, once again, I would outspeed. However, the enemy Vigor, my Vigor, is going to put up critical resistance, and I will no longer have a guaranteed kill with either the Kali or the Covenant. This team right here, the Iris is going to strip me. This team right here is simply going to outspeed me. This team right here, I can't reliably kill that Miho. And uh, I may or may not have enough damage to kill that Trassar. My Covenant should kill the Trassar. My Kali should kill the, um, should kill the Triana. But there's a little trick to this particular team. So if we were to think about how this team's going to work, right? Well, my Kali is going to be speed tuned to go before Covenant so that she can attack buff him. Basically, the Chloe is going to go first for invincibility. The Kali is then going to attack buff the Covenant and take invincibility on herself again through her own skill. And then the Covenant is going to one shot something. But on the enemy team, we must hit Triana first. So the Covenant is going to have attribute disadvantage, and if he were to go after the Trassar, then the Triana passive would trigger and save the Trassar. So in this case, I would not be able to attack that enemy team because I can't actually kill anything with Covenant first. Okay, so now that we've talked about all these different places where you can't use Kali Chloe Covenant, let's talk a little bit about where you can. So basically, there's a couple of key criteria, which is going to be true of most auto-win teams. First of all, the enemy needs to not have any kind of strip because you're counting on that invincibility in order to take the damage. You're also counting on the attack buff staying on your Covenant and your Kali. Now, these are going to be pretty squishy monsters. Ideally, you're going to be able to take out at least two enemies and then not have one resurrected. So this is not a great team to use against Tyrannus, for example. There's a different auto-win team for that, but this is not the one. 
Uh, this is not a great team to bring in against pandas like Mo Long or Tian Lang because they can strip. Uh, Fen Yang is fine. The Kali will one-shot him, but not the Mo Long or Tian Lang. What you're looking for, again, is just something that you can kill two monsters very quickly and then kind of whittle down the third. So if we look at this bottom team right here, you might have noticed that it changed because uh, I did want to make sure that I also did not get outsped. That's the other key to this team. Now, uh, this video actually, the original recording of this video wasn't great, so I split it in half. I'm recording the second part now, and I have changed my monster stats just a little bit. So the Chloe is at 288, but that still was not a safe speed to necessarily outspeed that Bastet. Uh, in this case, however, even if the Wusa does go first, it shouldn't matter because my Covenant will still be able to one-shot the Wusa, and I'm reasonably confident that my Kali will be able to one-shot that Zing Shea. The Kali is going to hit for about 50,000 damage. Now, you'll notice also we've got Kali's lead of 23 critical, so she's actually got 100% uh, crit rate regardless of which element she's going against, but uh, she'd have the attribute advantage against the Zing Shea as well. So let's go ahead and see how this team works. Now, one other thing that I forgot to mention, I mentioned it earlier in the video, but I just want to point this out again. You also have to think about your order of operations, and that means who's going to go in which turn order and what can you do at that time. So, for example, we know that my Kali is going to go second on my team to attack buff my Covenant, which means the Covenant has to be able to kill something on his turn. So if the enemy team has a Triana, it's not a good fit. But if the enemy team has a Harmonia, it's a great fit. Now, in this case, I thought the Wusa might outspeed me, which is, she did. Uh, excuse me, he did. I always have trouble with the Pioneers. You guys know that. Um, however, I knew my Chloe would cut, which she did. So we're going to get our invincibility up. Now the Laika is going to go. Um, and then, of course, the Laika had a 50-50 shot to hit either the Kali or the Chloe. So there was a little bit of a risk there, but uh, I did believe that I'd be able to take the hit as long as the Laika didn't um, basically violent proc twice because the skill one of the Laika is not going to ignore the invincibility, only the skill two will. So he was going to need to be able to justice me twice in order to kill me. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and do our attack buff right here. And now the Covenant, um, excuse me, the Chloe actually lapped because she's faster. So the Chloe is just gonna go ahead and hit the Zing Shea because I don't wanna have any revenge procs. Now the Covenant's gonna go ahead and take out that Wusa. Now with the double shields, the damage was down quite a bit, but we still did 67K. Since I took a hit right there, I'll go ahead and heal. And now I should be able to kill this Zing Shea right here with the Kali. Um, even with his passive, we were able to get him. So a normal Zing Shea is gonna be somewhere around 30 to 35,000 HP because they do need to have some uh, damage and other stuff built in. So even with the shields, I was good with my Kali. Now we'll go ahead and just strip off this Laika, get a little bit of skill damage as well. And really, we're just going to have to work this Laika down and hope he doesn't go crazy on the violence on us. This will give us... Ooh, we didn't get the continuous damage there. I think I'm actually going to go ahead and put my immunity up just to block the Laika continuous damage. Um, and in this case, also, it worked out because his revenge did zero damage to me. That should finish him off. And there you go. So uh, the Laika did present a risk on this team, but... I will say that this team is much better suited for lower Guardian and maybe at the edge of Guardian 2. As you get into G3, it does get a little bit harder to find defenses that are going to be vulnerable to it. Okay, so we did find one more team that we could use it against, and this is a very meta lower Guardian uh, defense. So this is one that you would probably want to bring it in frequently against, which is going to be the Zing Shea Harmonia Theo. Uh, and in this case, again, we're going to use the Covenant to one-shot the Harmonia, we're going to use the Kali to one-shot the Zing Shea, and then we're just going to work the Theo down, uh, utilizing the heal from the uh, Chloe. Now, obviously, there is a couple of risks here, the main one being simply that uh, the Theo goes proc crazy, but ultimately, because the Theo is going to be at 1 HP, and the Harmonia is going to be gone. Uh, even if it goes proc crazy and kills a couple of our monsters, we should be able to finish it off. Uh, we are going to have immunity up as well, so he can't defense break us. Okay, so this time we knew we were going to be able to take first turn. There was not, no chance anything on that enemy team was going to be faster than 288. As a matter of fact, it was really unlikely anything on the enemy team was going to be faster than 240, even at higher Guardian levels. Uh, so 240 would have been a safe, 250 we'll say would have been a safe Chloe to bring in here. So we go ahead and we put up our invincibility. Now the Theo is going to be just doing no damage. Um, we have immunity, it can't defense break. Same thing for the Zing Shea. 
Uh, we'll go ahead and just hit this Theo a little bit because we already know we're going to kill the other two. Now we'll go ahead and just attack buff with our Kali. We're going to one-shot out this Harmonia. Should be about 60,000, 56,000 damage. I think I don't have artifacts on him yet. Uh, we will go ahead and just heal just on the off chance that that Theomars actually was on revenge. I didn't want to get hit back. So we're going to go ahead and hit the Xing Shei again. Should be able to kill. Ooh, we didn't get the kill on the Xing Shei. But again, there's no heal. So, ooh, and there's the procs that I said we, uh, we were a little bit worried about. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get the Theo down to 1 HP before he chose to proc, but that is okay, because we're going to go ahead now and put our invincibility up. We lap again, get the heal. This should put the Theo down to 0 HP, um, or there we go. Now, we'll proc the Endor basically with the continuous damage and we are good to go. Okay, so we're gonna look at the Covenant first. Now you'll notice that I've got him set up for Rage, Attack, Crit Damage, Attack. Uh, to use my grinds is okay. You guys may also notice I'm in the Optimizer Pro. Uh, so in the Optimizer Pro, you could actually just use no focus stats at all and get every build possible. But if you're in the normal Optimizer, then you're gonna wanna refine the search a little bit more. So we're going to act like we're in the normal optimizer, which means I would keep my search depth lower, probably somewhere around. On Rage, I can usually go to about 100 because I don't have that many runes, but you might want to even need to go to 50. Um, I do. You guys know I like to go no broken sets, but I'll leave the offset open and just take a look at what the different sets are. Now, I disab I would disable the artifacts optimization here. You know what you're going to do. You're just going to look for two artifacts that give you attack as a flat stat, and they give you crit da damage bonus on the skill three. Be nice if you also got a little accuracy or crit damage on the skill two, but mostly what you're looking for is that crit damage skill three on an attack uh, flat stat for the attack and the water artifacts. Now we're gonna come over here to damage options. We're gonna choose his headshot. We're gonna take attack buff and we're gonna take guild war buildings. We're just gonna put that he's always gonna crit. We're gonna assume the enemy defense at 1200, but we're gonna click ignore defense so that doesn't actually matter. And then you'll put in your skill ups if you have any. Now his skill three has one skill up for a 25% damage buff and after that it's a cooldown. And this will leave everything as we need it. So we go ahead and hit apply. Then we're gonna come up, and you see it just ran our builds. We're gonna come up here, and we're gonna put 85 crit rate as a minimum to start, and we're gonna hit apply. You'll notice I have no speed requirement. Speed doesn't matter here. And then I'm just gonna sort by damage, and I can see that my highest build right now is 49,731, and nicely, it's in Rage Will. Uh, now, I do have only runes from inventory checked, so obviously if I were to go to locked runes, I would get a significantly higher damage output. So it depends on how much you want to invest into your covenant. Uh, again, if we wanted to filter down, I could actually filter in for a little bit of ac accuracy for skill two, but really at the end of the day, all we care about for this guy is just the raw damage he does. Now, if you don't want to be in a situation where you have to hit a fire monster with him, like for example, maybe you also want to be able to hit water, then you would need a hundred crit rate. So you hit a hundred, you hit apply, and we can see now my best build is about 45,800, moving me to energy rage. It's 102 speed, but we don't care because he's invincible until he takes his turn, so it really doesn't matter how slow he is. All that matters is how much damage he does. Now, we're going to do basically the exact same thing for the Kali. We're, gonna have, we're still going to have Kali in Rage. We're still going to be using Attack, Crit, Damage, Attack. Uh, the only thing is the Kali really doesn't need accuracy over here, so we can just kind of go with four, uh, four stats in the search depth. Now the Kali is also going to need either 62 or 77 crit rate. So 62 crit rate is with the attribute advantage and the leader skill, uh, Kali gets 100% uh, crit rate on wind. If you want Kali to also be able to hit fire, then you need to go to 77. So it's your choice which of those two you go with, but I would run the optimizer first at 62. Take a look at how much damage you're actually able to do and see if you're satisfied with it. And wow, that's a 65,000 damage build at 65 crit rate. So that's actually much stronger than the one I'm in right now. Uh, but that is uh, because it looks like I checked uh, use um, locked runes. 
So again, if you were to go with uh, just use runes from inventory, then your actual build is usually going to be slower because your better runes are on other monsters. So in this case, we could do 57,000 damage. That's still a big upgrade from where my Kali is right now. Now, you guys are seeing the big damage numbers. This is a great time for me to reemphasize that you want to target damage that is appropriate for your stage of game. So if you're in Conqueror 1, you probably, well, let's say if you're in a C3 guild, you probably only need to be able to do 35,000 damage in order to one-shot the enemy monsters. If you're in a higher guardian guild, then you may need to actually be up in the 50,000 plus. So just be aware of what the average HP is of an enemy monster, and then make sure you're setting your targets rate, target um, target damages appropriately. Now, as far as the Chloe goes, I could show you guys the optimizer, but really, you know what you're doing. You're just going to put her on Swift and make her as fast as you can. Swift will is nice, but it's not necessary for this team. The whole purpose of this team is you plan, you go in planning to take first turn. So even Swift broken is fine for her. Really, give her some uh, tanky stats because as you saw. Uh, you are going to take some hits from whichever the third monster is and then you have a 50 50 chance that that monster will go if you know if that monster happens to be water and not thamars you know not element king then it's a 50 50 shot that they'll go between the kali and the chloe kali is probably going to die and you'll rely on covenant to finish it but the chloe can take a few hits if you build her tanky but again ultimately all you really care about is making her as fast as possible and if you give her some damage that's great too. It just gives you another way to finish off that final monster. So that's going to be it for today's video, guys. In the background, you can see a team that I definitely would not bring the Kali Chloe Covenant into. Uh, but just to show you, we are in a higher guardian, uh, higher, higher guardian guild uh, war right now. So anyway, on that note, guys, as always, hope you enjoyed the video. I uh, hope you found it helpful, and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, if you're still with me to this point, then that means that you probably liked the video, found it entertaining, or even better, both. So please, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment down below, because those things help the channel grow, and more importantly, they show me that the video is useful, and that's the whole reason I do this in the first place.